Have you ever wondered why rejection hits us so hard? When we don't get that dream job, when a relationship falls apart, or when things don't go as planned, it feels like more than just a simple no. It feels personal, like a wound that cuts deep. But according to Stoicism, rejection isn't just a setback, it's a gift. It's life's way of redirecting us towards something better, something more aligned with our true path. In this video, we're diving into five Stoic lessons that reveal why rejection is actually a blessing in disguise. These lessons will show you how every rejection is an opportunity to learn, grow, and find new directions that you may not have considered before. Number one, you can't control everything. In life, one of the hardest lessons to learn is that we simply cannot control everything. This is a core principle of Stoicism, and it's particularly relevant when it comes to dealing with rejection. The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius, who was also a Roman emperor, wrote extensively about the importance of understanding our limitations. He believed that while we have control over our own actions, thoughts and responses, we have no control over external events, including how others perceive or react to us. When we face rejection, whether it's in our professional lives, personal relationships or any other area, it's easy to feel as though we've failed. The natural reaction is to ask, what did I do wrong? Or why didn't this work out? But Stoicism teaches us to shift our perspective. Instead of fixating on the outcome, which is beyond our control, we should focus on what we can control, our response to the rejection. Consider this, when you put yourself out there, be it applying for a job, asking someone out, or presenting an idea, you are taking a risk. But that risk doesn't mean you have control over the result. The decision to accept or reject you lies with others, influenced by countless factors that have nothing to do with your worth or effort. By internalizing the stoic principle that you can't control everything, you free yourself from the burden of taking rejection personally. It's not a reflection of your value, it's simply an outcome over which you had no control. This understanding allows you to move forward with resilience, knowing that rejection is not a verdict on who you are, but rather an event that is part of the larger journey. In short, by accepting that you can't control everything, you gain control over your own peace of mind. Rejection loses its power to harm you, and you become stronger in the process. Number two, rejection is redirection. One of the most powerful lessons from Stoicism is the idea that rejection is not the end, but rather a redirection. This concept suggests that when one door closes, it's not meant to shut us out, but to guide us toward another, perhaps even better opportunity. The Stoic philosopher Seneca famously said, fate leads the willing and drags along the reluctant. This quote encapsulates the idea that when we face rejection, life is nudging us toward a path more aligned with our true purpose. Imagine you've spent weeks preparing for an interview for what you believe is your dream job. You've rehearsed your answers, researched the company, and visualized yourself working there. But then you get the dreaded email. We regret to inform you. It's a gut punch and your first reaction might be to feel defeated. However, Stoicism teaches us to view this rejection not as a failure, but as life's way of saying, this isn't the right path for you, there's something better out there. This shift in perspective can be transformative. Instead of wallowing in disappointment, you begin to see the rejection as a signpost, redirecting you toward new possibilities. Perhaps the job wasn't as perfect as you thought, or maybe there's a different opportunity that will better utilize your skills and passions. By embracing this stoic principle, you start to see rejection as a form of guidance, helping you to realign with your true path. Moreover, this idea of redirection extends beyond just career goals. In relationships, for instance, 
A breakup or unreciprocated feelings can be deeply painful. But Stoicism encourages us to view these experiences as opportunities to find a more fulfilling connection elsewhere, one that aligns with who we are and what we truly need. Rejection then becomes not something to fear, but something to welcome. It's life's way of ensuring we don't settle for less than what we're truly capable of achieving. By trusting that rejection is redirection, we open ourselves up to new paths and possibilities that we may have never considered otherwise. Number three, focus on what you can learn. When faced with rejection, the initial reaction is often one of disappointment, frustration, or even self-doubt. However, the Stoics teach us to approach rejection with a different mindset, one of learning and growth. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher who began life as a slave, emphasized the importance of seeing every challenge as an opportunity to gain wisdom. Rejection is no different. It's a chance to reflect, reassess, and ultimately improve. Instead of viewing rejection as a final verdict, Stoicism encourages us to see it as feedback. It's not just a no, it's a lesson wrapped in disguise. This shift in perspective allows us to extract valuable insights from the experience. Ask yourself, why did this happen? What can I learn from this situation? How can I use this rejection to better myself? For instance, if you've been rejected after a job interview, instead of immediately concluding that you weren't good enough, try to objectively analyze the situation. Perhaps there were areas in your skills or presentation that could be improved. Maybe the rejection highlights a need for more experience or a different approach. By focusing on what you can learn, you turn rejection into a tool for personal and professional growth. This approach doesn't just apply to careers, but to every aspect of life. In relationships, for example, being rejected or experiencing a breakup can be incredibly painful. But within that pain lies a wealth of lessons about yourself, about what you truly need in a partner, and about how to build healthier connections in the future. Every rejection teaches us something, whether it's about our expectations, our communication skills, or our compatibility with others. Focusing on learning also helps to depersonalize the rejection. It shifts the narrative from I wasn't good enough to what can I do differently next time. This not only reduces the emotional sting of rejection, but also empowers you to take proactive steps toward improvement. It's about seeing rejection not as a reflection of your worth, but as a stepping stone on the path to becoming a better version of yourself. In essence, when you focus on what you can learn from rejection, you transform it from a source of pain into a powerful catalyst for growth. Each rejection becomes a lesson that brings you one step closer to your goals and helps you navigate life's challenges with greater wisdom and resilience. Number four, detach from the outcome. A core tenet of Stoicism is the practice of detachment, particularly detachment from outcomes. This principle is crucial when dealing with rejection. Often, the pain of rejection stems not just from the event itself, but from our intense attachment to a specific outcome. We set our hearts on achieving something, a job, a relationship, a goal, and when it doesn't materialize, the disappointment can be overwhelming. But the Stoics remind us that while we can control our efforts, we cannot control the results. By detaching from the outcome, we free ourselves from the suffering that often accompanies unmet expectations. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus put it simply, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This means that our focus should be on the process, on doing our best, making our best effort, rather than obsessing over whether or not we achieve the desired result. When you detach from the outcome, you can approach challenges with a clear mind, free from the fear of failure or rejection. You do your best, and whatever happens, happens. 
Consider this scenario. You're deeply invested in a project at work, pouring your time, energy and creativity into it. Naturally, you want it to succeed and you hope your efforts will be recognized. But despite all your hard work, the project doesn't get the approval you were hoping for, or worse, it's scrapped entirely. The immediate reaction might be one of frustration or even anger. But if you adopt the stoic mindset of detachment, you'll realize that while the outcome is disappointing, it doesn't diminish the value of your effort or your worth. Detaching from the outcome doesn't mean you don't care. It means you recognize that the outcome is not entirely within your control. What you can control is the quality of your work, your dedication and your attitude. When you focus on these aspects, you can handle rejection more gracefully, understanding that the rejection doesn't define you or your efforts. It's just one possible outcome among many. This practice of detachment is especially liberating in personal relationships. When you detach from the need for a specific response or outcome, you interact more authentically without the weight of expectations. You express yourself honestly and openly without the fear of how the other person might react. If the outcome isn't what you hoped for, it's easier to accept because you weren't hinging your happiness on it. In essence, by detaching from the outcome, you reclaim your peace of mind. Rejection becomes less about personal failure and more about the natural ebb and flow of life's events. You learn to value your efforts for what they are, independent of the final result. This mindset not only helps you cope with rejection, but also allows you to pursue your goals and relationships with greater freedom and resilience. Number 5. Amor Fati. Love your fate. The Stoic concept of Amor Fati, which translates to love your fate, is perhaps one of the most profound lessons in embracing rejection as a gift. Amor Fati encourages us to not only accept whatever happens in our lives, but to actively love it, including the challenges, hardships, and yes, even the rejections. It's about seeing every experience, whether positive or negative, as a necessary and valuable part of your life's journey. The idea of Amor Fati goes beyond mere acceptance. It's about embracing everything that comes your way with gratitude, recognizing that each event is an integral part of your story. When you apply this mindset to rejection, it transforms how you perceive and respond to it. Instead of seeing rejection as something to endure, you begin to see it as something to appreciate, a crucial piece of the puzzle that shapes who you are and where you're going. Think of it this way, every rejection, every setback is like a sculptor's chisel shaping you into a better version of yourself. The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius wrote, a blazing fire makes flame and brightness out of everything that is thrown into it. This quote captures the essence of Amor Fati. Whatever life throws at you, even rejection is fuel for your growth and development. It's all part of the fire that refines you. For example, if you're rejected from a job you desperately wanted, Amor Fati teaches you to embrace that rejection as part of your fate. Perhaps this rejection is steering you toward a career path that's more aligned with your true passions and strengths. Maybe it's pushing you to develop new skills or consider opportunities you wouldn't have otherwise explored. By loving your fate, you trust that this rejection is exactly what you needed, even if it's painful at the moment. In relationships, Amor Fati can be a powerful tool for resilience. If a relationship ends or someone doesn't return your feelings, Amor Fati encourages you to love that outcome recognizing that it's leading you towards something more fulfilling in the long run. It's about trusting that everything happens for a reason, and that reason is ultimately for your benefit. Loving your fate doesn't mean passivity or resignation. It's about active engagement with life as it unfolds. It's about seeing the beauty in every experience, no matter how difficult, and understanding that each one is a stepping stone on your journey. When you practice Amor Fati, rejection loses its power to cause lasting pain. Instead, 
it becomes another part of the life you love, an essential chapter in the story of your growth. In essence, Amor Fati is about embracing your life with all its ups and downs as a masterpiece in progress. Rejection, then, is not an interruption in that progress, but a vital part of it. By loving your fate, you find peace in the present and confidence in the future, knowing that every experience, including rejection, is contributing to the unique and valuable person you are becoming. In conclusion, understanding rejection through the lens of Stoicism can transform how we experience and respond to it. By embracing the Stoic principles that rejection is a gift, we learn to see it not as a setback, but as an opportunity for growth and redirection. The Stoics teach us that we can't control everything, including the outcomes we desire. What we can control is our response, focusing on what we can learn and improving ourselves from these experiences. Detaching from specific outcomes allows us to approach life's challenges with resilience and adopting Amor Fati, the love of fate, helps us accept and even appreciate every aspect of our journey, including rejection. Rejection is not an end, but a valuable part of our personal and professional evolution. It's a chance to realign with our true path, to refine our skills and to grow stronger. By applying these stoic lessons, we can handle rejection with grace and confidence, knowing that each experience, no matter how difficult, contributes to our development. So next time you face rejection, remember, it's not a defeat, but a gift guiding you towards something greater. With that said, thanks for watching and until next time.